starting now. Hi, it's Tuesday. It's Super Tuesday. Super Tuesday. Super Tuesday. And we are your super fullness duo. I am Fullness Man. This is... Beautiful be Grace Girl. Yes. And That's our superhero. Superhero aliases. Names, aliases. Yes. Um, you're not supposed to tell people your <laughs> alias Why do we tell hero. people? Um, I guess we just want people to know. <laughs> that we're, 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 we don't want to be super. secret. <clears throat> but um, Super Tuesday means that there was a lot of voting today. Right, but not here in Florida, right? Not in Florida. Ours is next week. Okay. Yeah. And... Uh, I haven't paid much attention, but from what I picked up on the radio a while ago, Biden was like getting some big wins like he was wanting to. Oh. <laughs> you know, it, it kind of seemed like he was down and out there for a while. Right. Maybe he was Biden his time. Oh my goodness. Are you talking politics on our each there's two things. There's two things uh, you're never supposed to talk about: religion and politics. <laughs> and we're talking about both. And we're talking politics, Hi, but not religion. <laughs> Our friend Gwen is here. Hi, Gwen. Heather's here. Kim is here. Hi, Kim. I went to high school with Kim. You did? Yeah. Wow. People think we went to high school together. I know. <laughs> we walked into a a restaurant one time, and and the lady said, have you guys been together since you were in yeah, elementary school? Yeah, strangers <laughs> in some other city somewhere. We were like, no, but Maybe we, we just like have it. that thing. We just look like it, and we feel like it. All right, so right before we came on the air... Happy Tuesday. Judy said, do you know what you're going to say? She said, because I don't. And I said, I don't either, but we'll talk about love. But we do have a title, and we... Hi, Shelly. We've, we've titled this... Hi, um, Tina. Hi, Dan. Love with, Hi, Jerry love with no demands. Look at all of our friends. <laughs> Look, from all over the country. shaking her head at you. At me? Yeah. No, you. you. No, it's you. Hi, Kim. <laughs> Hi, Norma. Why are you shaking your head at me? <laughs> because you're. I'm the brains of this outfit. <laughs> um, you're, you're the brains. I'm the beauty. <laughs> I'm the beauty, too. No, I'm the brains. I think I'm the you're brains. You're the brains. I'm the beauty. It's Taco Tuesday. That's right, Norma. It's Taco. Oh, it's we Taco Tuesday. Have tacos. We didn't have tacos. What we had, were we thinking? We had burrito bowls. Well, yeah, we went to Chipotle for that was. Mm -hmm. And we had that good soup that you made for lunch. Okay, what's our topic? Our topic is love with no demands. Oh, I knew that. Yeah. <clears throat> so we're going to talk about that. Now, the reason we call it love with no demands is because we're talking about a love with no demands. Now, <laughs> now people say, people think, okay, that, that sounds like you're going to talk about the God kind of love. But when we say no demands, we mean no demands. So lately, <clears throat> you and I have been talking about um, that good old King James word for love in 1 Corinthians 13, which it, and it's charity. charity. Now, a long time ago, to read that chapter of the Bible, I ditched the King James a long time ago. Whenever I wanted to read 1 Corinthians 13, I would pick up a different translation because almost all the other ones used the word love. And I remember many, many years ago finding out, well, this word is agape. This is talking about love. This isn't just talking about charity because charity seemed like something small. It seemed like it seemed like just, I don't know, you know, just an act of, uh, uh, just, a, uh, just, a, just a nice act. Um, it didn't seem big enough for God. But uh, the way we were talking about it was that there's an element of that word charity. And the reason that it was actually used by the translators of the King James Bible, because it speaks of something that's totally, uh, that goes beyond uh, normal love as most of us know it. We know dimensions of it. We, we may even be charitable, you know, in, in many cases or in certain cases. But when we're talking about the God kind of love, charity actually is a good word because charity means that you're giving without asking in return, right? It's not a loan. Mm -hmm. God's love is not, is not lending. Mm -hmm. it's God's love is not a transaction mm -hmm. where, where I will love you and do this for you 
uh, if you will do that. A lot of times people uh, think of their walk with God as a transactional type of right. relationship, is that God will do this if we will do that. Mm -hmm. you know? um, a lot of those things are taught to us, such as you know the things that we have to do in order to have favor with God and, and, and man, the things that we have to do in order to be financially blessed, the things that we you know, you know, all, all, all these things that we feel like it's transactional, like God will bless us if we do, do this and so. But his love actually is actually, uh, has a, has the character of charity, which means it's a, it's, it, it gives without any demands. And really when we see the work of Jesus, we see a complete and full giving, giving, giving. He initiated this. He, he planned that the whole thing. He, he, he did it in a way that totally would not require anything of us. In fact, Romans 8 says that all the righteous requirement would be fulfilled for us through him. <laughs> mm -hmm. So all righteous requirements have been fulfilled. That God demonstrated in that work of Jesus, death, burial, resurrection, and ascension to the Father, and the giving of the Spirit, that... Um, that his love is a love that didn't, didn't and doesn't need us to give anything to him, certainly not beforehand, before he gives it, or it doesn't even need reciprocation. Like for us to do something in exchange. In exchange. And, and our walk with God is, is, is not a transactional exchange like that. And we want people to see that and, 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 and really get it ingrained in your brain, burned in your head, that this whole thing of God is absolutely, it's based totally upon who he is, on his goodness, and that his kind of love, charity love, agape love, giving with no demands uh, kind of love, um, doesn't require or really even, in a sense, expect anything in return. When we use the word charity, when we give things, like we give things to the goodwill, you know, sometimes you... you you, you, you may give to a, a church or so you're not asking for anything bad. Sometimes you might give to someone that's, that's in need. Sometimes you will give something to someone on the street. We're not asking them to give something back to us. We're giving it total out of uh, charity or a love that's not demanding anything. And that's how God's love is. Mm -hmm. And when you, when, you, when you see God that way and realize that that's how his love is for you, it takes off all expectations and pressure and all the requirements off of you. Because God is, 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 is just that good. Here's a good example that we talk about. Um, when I saw this many years ago, I made a decision. And I decided <laughs> that since his love, since I understand now that his love is a love that's totally based on the goodness of the giver, not on the goodness or the badness of the receiver. The merit, yeah. The merit. That's why God so loved the world that he gave his son for the world. It didn't matter how good they were acting or how bad they were acting. He gave his son for the, uh, the Charles Mansons and the Adolf Hitlers, just as he did for the Mother Teresas of the world. Uh, it didn't matter to him. He gave completely the same thing to everybody. And, 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 and that's a love with no requirements. And so uh, after I saw that, I made a decision that, that I would uh, tip uh, servers in restaurants no longer based on the merits of their job performance, which I used to always do. And actually, I was proud of it. I was proud of, I'm like, yeah, I'll tip them good. If they do good service, I'll give them a good tip. And if they just give, you know, half A service, then they you know, they can expect that kind of, kind of a, a, a tip. But I decided that I would, I would tip based on nothing to do with their service, but based upon how good I want it to be to them. And so it's all a one-sided thing then. Then it's not has nothing to do with did they did they serve us well or did they make mistakes or did they maybe they were having a bad day, they, maybe they weren't weren't very very happy, you know, while they yeah. were serving us. But but that becomes irrelevant with this kind of love because it's based upon your heart of of wanting 
to just bless and give, and it has nothing to do with whether they've earned it or not. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And that's the God kind of love. I used to be a server. Yeah. I, so. I used to work in a restaurant. This, this is how I put myself through school. And some days I was great, you know? And some days I was really just messing up left and right and I would have loved to wait on, on you <laughs> or like on somebody who would tip me according to their goodness yeah and not on not because on yours. when you're kind of messing up or getting slow on stuff there's this pressure because you know you're working for tips and you're gonna mm -hmm. you're gonna not you know make very much money yeah that and night. so you're you're wanting to to do well but sometimes I think about God that way, the times that I mess up and it it doesn't change his way of looking at me. Like it exactly. doesn't change his care for me. Right. His love for us. And, and as you said, his care for us. That means his blessing is still all over us. Mm -hmm. Isn't that good? It has nothing to do with our performance. Charity, mm -hmm. uh, 1 Corinthians 13, charity God kind of love, God's nature, character himself, seeketh not her own, does not right. seek anything for itself. Right. So with all that God did, God did it totally based on his goodness, not, not so much in what he could get out of it, but what he could give. That's what love does. Mm -hmm. And as we grow in that, uh, we find that that's, that happens in our life. And the way that we grow in it is simply because it's simply uh, by um, finding out that his love is that way. The more I see, more I have found out that his love for me is totally without demands, without requirements, without needing any transaction from me. It's, that, it, it's, it's a love that not only fulfills us in a way that we now have that love to give, it just reflects, it comes out. You experience it, and so you have that experiential love to begin to give um, to a world that needs it. The, you know, the, 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 as a server, you know, you, you're not you're not always having a bad day. I mean, sometimes a server has to go to work, and they've just got the most horrible news right before they right before they had to go on shift, mm -hmm. and they're expected to be on point, to smile, and everything. And sometimes it's not all their fault. Sometimes everything in the kitchen is going crazy and you're mm -hmm. trying to do your best, you know? And anyway, um, when you're, when you're giving out of your goodness, those things are irrelevant. The person still gets blessed no matter what the circumstances are. Mm -hmm. The person is still loved. The person is still cared for. I like that you use that word is that it doesn't change his, his care for us because no matter uh, what, whether it's a good circumstantial day or bad, God's care is still the same. Do you think that that has affected you having expectations on yourself? Have that good question. Absolutely. Because, yeah, it seems like you you don't really operate with these expectations that you have to. I mean, especially in ministry, like a lot of times people are looking at how many people are following you or how many people are coming to your meetings or how much, you know, income you're getting, like all of that to yeah. determine. Did I do a good job in yeah. my performance on stage today? You know. Yes. Um, do you have expectations? Yeah, like that's that? a good question because that changes. I will say this, that I totally, like most of us, are or have been at some point, we totally had expectations, totally um, uh, felt like, um, well, for one thing, there were certain things that I wanted. I wanted a big following. I wanted validation from people that I respected. I wanted numbers. I wanted money. I wanted all these things that that I had the idea that these were the blessings of God, that these were, when someone is blessed, this is how it looks. Well, you use the word expectation. When I found out that God's love has no um, requirements of me, makes no demands of me, what's that going to do? It's going to take all the condemnation off. And the pressure. Yeah, and, and the pressure. But where there's no condemnation, there's no sense of inferiority. Therefore, there's no need 
to become something more, something else, something better, because you are. Mm -hmm. You are loved. And that's how we begin to know what it means when the word says we are complete in him. Mm -hmm. And you get a sense of wholeness and completion that you can only know from this love that has made no demands of us. And until you know that, you think that 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 completion and wholeness means all of these outer things yeah. which are a mirage of the of the real they're they're a, they're, a, they're decoys is what they really are mm. they're decoys that you chase and chase and chase and no matter how many of them you gain they're never enough mm-hmm. and i'm a witness of that and i write about that in the in the book fullness um, but but the expectations that i have of myself it gave me a sense of I'm loved. I'm, I'm more than accepted and approved of the father. And it has nothing to do, get this. It has nothing to do with my merit Mm -hmm. or or performance. So all, like you said, the pressure is off of that. All now you can just enjoy being a child of God. Just be enjoy being loved. Now, the other side of that, which is what people seem to be very concerned about, is that, yes, it changes your lifestyle. It changes your love level, your ability to give that same kind of love. It changes your joy level because mm-hmm. you, don't have, you don't have so many days of, of you're not uh, measuring up. You're not there yet. You're not attaining. You're still struggling to try to, try to become, try to get better, try to have more. Yeah. It takes all of that out. This is the rest that we're talking about. Julia said her screen froze. Is anybody else uh, saying, yeah, you know, Tina said, I'm not. Uh, a lot of times it's just on the other end. Oh, try going out and coming back yeah, in. Yeah, go out and come <laughs> back in real quick. Don't be gone long. <laughs> so, um, so I was going to ask you about, you, you said that in knowing this love that doesn't have expectations on you, it doesn't make you want to just sit back and take advantage and just do whatever you want. And good question. Or and uh, what is the difference between people who do that and say, hey, I'm loved. God doesn't have any expectations on me. So I'm just going to, you know. I'm just going to go sleep around. I'm going to go steal. I'm going to go whatever. Do whatever, do whatever uh, um, hedonistic, any hedonistic impulses. That's how a lot of the, the Gnostics were back in the day. Um, the difference is very clear. The difference is those that do that, those that use grace uh, for an occasion to the flesh, as Paul called it, mm-hmm. they don't know grace. They, they, they have a doctrine. They have a, a, a doctrine, a theology that says, all sins forgiven. It doesn't matter, you know, if I sin tomorrow or whatever. Uh, therefore, I might as well just just do whatever. And 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 um, and so they're using they're using a, a doctrine of, of grace in order to just be um, indulgent, to be mm-hmm. super indulgent. And tr- and what they're doing is still trying to fulfill lust. Right. They're trying to fulfill, but with a di- with a. And because grace is only a doctrine or a theology instead mm-hmm. of an experience, they mm-hmm. still have those lusts and desires that they're trying to feel. Now, so I heard you say something once that, you know, that experience that you had, what you talk about in fullness, where you just laid on the floor and you said at that point in your life, you thought that God's love was like this big. It was big. But when you laid on the floor and you really saw the extent of his love, it was like the whole... You, you couldn't see the ends of it. Ends of it. And uh, that That's what we're, 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 we're talking about. Mm-hmm. Because we would throw around the terms of God's unconditional love, his unmerited favor. You know, we would use those terms a lot of times, mm-hmm. but it meant this well, it's <laughs> when, still it, limited. when, when, when it's still limited and it, and, and, and so we had caveats and conditions. Mm-hmm. Yes. God loves you unconditionally, but you know, yes, grace is unmerited, but you know, and we had all the, the, these things simply because we just, we, we didn't know. In fact, all those excuses and requirements and the caveats and conditions 
those actually were barriers erected, like Paul talks about, erected against the knowledge of God, kept us from knowing God in this way that actually causes us to be like his nature, act like his nature, as the Bible says it's supposed to. Yeah. When we behold his glory, which is really the goodness of the Lord, we, it's like looking in a mirror. We see who we really are, who he made us to be. And, uh, and, uh, and, and we're transformed when we see that we see him. We see his goodness that changes us. It just mm -hmm. changes us. And, and this, is, this is why I'm always on the soapbox about this because it changed me. And there's nothing else that has worked. And I, I, I wish you know, I could uh, you know, convince everyone that, would, that ever has heard my voice that I have tried everything. Yeah. The only thing that, that, that worked was to submit to this, humble myself under this and say, you know what, God, it has nothing to do with me. It's not on my merit. It's not on my goodness. And it's not on my wickedness. It's only you, 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 in you and of you and by you consist all things. And it's in you that I live and move and have all of my being. And, and that takes all the condemnation, the requirements and the pressure off. And so so get, I want to say something else about what you said about, so, so the people that would use grace for an occasion for sin and lustful indulgence, that's, that's just somebody that does not, does not know. Mm -hmm. And this whole, that's why we want people to understand this whole thing is not about getting the doctrine of grace. It's not about, it's not about adopting the theology of grace and unconditional love. It's about really, really, Tasting and experiencing him who is absolute love. That love with no demands. I mean, no demands. Once you, once you see that, no, no, no demands. Well, what if I did this? No demands. What if I did that? No demands. Think of the worst thing you could do. It doesn't change a thing because it's simple, a simple, uh, simple, um, equation here. <laughs> it's all on God. None of us. That is a love with no demands. And when you look at the work of Jesus, this is the demonstration of God's grace. Just look at it, please. Don't you know, don't, can't we see that every bit of that was put on him? Every bit of that was put on him. And Paul would talk about that a lot. Say, said it came by belief in Christ. It came by what you received in him. It came by this gospel. This was the power. Why do we want to go on and leave it for something else? Add other things to it or, or go off on another tangent when the, when the gospel shows that all of it, everything is by him, for him, and through him, as Colossians says. So would you say that there's a sort of satisfaction that happens not when you know the, the doctrine of grace, but when you have an experience of that unconditional love that, that it sort of takes away that desire to find new spiritual ideas? Yeah, you don't like need it anymore. That's a good, a good point there because... You have found fullness and rest. This is it. This is home. This is the mountaintop. This is the seventh day. This is the Sabbath. This is the, 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 the third day of the Lord, the seventh day from Adam, however your kingdom teaching uh, speaks it. This is the, 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 the top of the mountain. It's Mount Zion with Jesus. It's, it's the heavenly Jerusalem. This is it. There, there is no other. Now we get to live here and learn about it throughout all eternity and experience more and more of it. But we are there. And that takes away when you, when you have found what satisfies your soul. You're not looking for the next edgy doctrine. You're not looking for the next far out deep mystery of the kingdom. You're not looking for, for, you know, some hidden mystery of, you know, whatever, you know, uh, I, I saw a Christian magazine sometime not too long ago that 
almost every other advertisement as I was flipping through it was learn the secret mystery of the priestly prayer. Learn the the you know the and it's all and it's and it's and it's geared toward these Christians that think I'm missing something here. I'm missing. I'm looking for some other some some deep revelation knowledge that I that I don't know. The one one thing. So, but why can't they get, why don't they experience God's love? Like, what is it? They're looking at other places, for one thing. They're looking at in other places. They're either looking for, for, for deeper doctrines or they're looking for things. They're looking for manifestations. That, that, that can distract you a lot of times. Mm -hmm. Looking for the manifestations of a God of love mm -hmm. rather than experiencing the love that fills the inside, not the outside. Mm -hmm. You know, Jesus talked about the the believer that so they can still be un, unfruitful because the, the 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 thorns of this world. So they they choke it, choke that word out. That word is truth. That truth is speaking to us this all the time. Mm -hmm. But that but 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 the cares of this life, he said, the deception of things and money and wealth, the desires for th other things, whether it's physical things or other spiritual doodads or whatever, you know. Um, all of those things are simply the people grope for them and look for them as a result of not being satisfied, satiated, full in heart of God. And there's nothing that's going to do it. The next deepest mystery of the kingdom that somebody teaches next year is not what it, what it is. Mm -hmm. It's the gospel of Jesus Christ this, that, that in this, that love was revealed. Love was manifest. Not that we loved him, but he loved us first and that love is what you're looking for that love is what what is what fulfills you once for all and that as we were mentioning it takes all the condemnation automatically it does cast out all fear you're not afraid anymore you're full mm -hmm. you are full you're satisfied you're not afraid of losing because you've got eternity now you're not afraid of uh, you don't have fear of death anymore it's all God, because you are, you feel full of life, and you know that even if you laid this body down, you would be so full of 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 life. You know these things. We know these things in our spirit, and that's why that that good news. The spirit bears witness that we are now the children, offspring of the Most High God, and everything has produced after its own kind as he is so are we and god is god is love and 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 this excites me because there is nothing else this is it this is not rick's doctrine rick had lots of doctrines <laughs> i had lots of rick's doctrines um this is gospel the grace revealed through jesus in that demonstration uh, and, 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 and working of a love that had no demands from us. What Jesus did on the cross was complete charity. Charity. Um, he just gave. Mm -hmm. He just gave. With, and, and whereas what we saw in the Old Testament was lots of requirements if of righteousness. This, you if you do this, you'll be blessed. If you don't do this, you'll be cursed. That's essentially what we see in that in that, that, that Old Testament law. And then Jesus took the curse. He, he took the whole thing. He says, here, not only will I fulfill the requirement, I will take the curse. I'll become the curse. I'll become death. I'll become sin. I'll be all of it. That's absolute charity. What are people saying here? Let's so catch a breath. Gwen was saying, true. I was scrambling, trying to figure out what I didn't know. It was more of a venture of obtaining knowledge than anything else. And Jesus is the opposite. He wants you to rest, agree, receive, and he does it all. This is very true, Gwen. Thanks for saying that because, you know, there's a scripture that's very clear about that. It says they're ever learning, but never coming to a knowledge of the truth. And what we're talking about here is the truth. Just like Gwen said there, is that this whole thing, why did Jesus do this? Why did he put an end to all the sin, the condemnation, the fear, everything? Because the whole purpose was as it was for man in the beginning, in the garden, we we are we are here to rest in him he 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 finished it it's not it's not another dispensation it's not the next millennium it's not the next revival or the next move of god jesus 
yeah. brought that rest and that peace and it's and, and it's fulfilled in him. He brought the whole kingdom to us, righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Dan said, no more yellow brick no road. No more yellow brick road. Goodbye, yellow <laughs> brick road. Alyssa said, no more fear. Mm -hmm. There's another thing. It just, it, 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 it takes these things away. All these things that we, we were trying to get rid of, and so many of us, we're, you know, we're plagued by fear, almost all of us in, in some degree or another. Some are so paralyzed by fear they can barely even get out of bed. <laughs> Yeah. And others are afraid of, you know, death or, mm -hmm. or, or some are afraid of, of sin. Some are, some are afraid of God in some ways, um, afraid of other people, afraid of crowds, afraid, afraid of speaking, all kinds of things. Everybody is plagued by it in some way or has dealt with it in some way or another. And those are the kind of things that we, we try to get rid of. You know, we preach against it and say, don't fear not, fear not, fear not, says God. But you can't get rid of fear. You can't get rid of lust. You can't. You just, you're not able to. You can't get rid of, you can't even get rid of the, the, the hate that comes from the fear and the anger. You, you, can, you can train your, your, your actions to some degree, some degree. You can't get rid of any of these things. You're, you know, like God told him in Jeremiah, your, cure, your, your wound is incurable. Yeah. And, uh, and the only thing that, that, that does it is this perfect love, which just washes it out, drives it out, or casts it out. Some Bibles say it just, it takes care of it. Just like, it, it, just like light dispels, dark dispels the darkness. It's just gone. Mm -hmm. And that's, this is what the experience is. This is what you experience in this. You're like, where did all that anger go? Where did that impatience go? Where did that self-hate and condemnation and that pressure I used to put on me, where did that, what happened? It just got replaced by something wonderful. Mm -hmm. See, this love is not man's love. This love is not a cute little sweet being nice love. This love is the power that created the universe. This love is the thing that fulfills. It mm -hmm. makes us whole. It's like we've been going around with like birds with no wings. This love is our wings mm -hmm. again. That's good. Um, a while back, Ryan was sharing something, and now I can't find it. <clears throat> he says, hey, Ryan. yes, yes, and yes. <laughs> that satisfaction <laughs> fills the void. He, he was saying that he used to feel shame, that he hid thinking he was unworthy, and he, he now feels the unburdening of all That's that. That's what this does. Heaviness. And this is something that so many of us deal with, and this is... This is, there again, this is why people do so many things, even spiritual things, to try to ful fulfill that, 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 that yearning. The, the, God wrapped this whole thing up in Christ. He didn't want us yearning anymore. He wanted us enjoying. Mm -hmm. He didn't want us to be longing for him. He wanted us to enjoy being with him. He loves us. What does mm -hmm. love want? Love wants wants the object of love to, 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 to be free, to be joyful, to be, to be full, mm -hmm. to be happy, satisfied, all those things. And he does it from the inside. This is a point we want to make. That's what this love does. It fixes us inside. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of times people are distracted by looking to things uh, you know, on the outside, mm -hmm. um, thinking, well, if God loves me, he'll do this, that, and the other. God, there's no question. God loved us why he did everything. Mm -hmm. He did everything. And when I talk about my experience that I mentioned in, full, in the book Fullness, um, I just got a sense for the first time that everything I needed or wanted, I had because I had him. And he was not only enough, he was more than enough. And that's not complacency. See, uh, we want to make that clear too, because this satisfaction we're talking about is a feeling of fullness and wholeness. Mm -hmm. We're not talking about complacency. The difference is complacency feels incomplete mm -hmm. and not whole, but goes ahead and settles for it and just says, well, I'll never be any better. So I'm just going to, you know, rest right here. That's complacency. I need more, but I'm just not going to go for it. You know, mm -hmm. that's complacent. 
fullness or satisfaction or satiation in God says, I've got everything. Why do I want to chase anything? Mm -hmm. Because you have it. I really think that's why Jesus said, you know, when they said, when will you establish the kingdom? He said, the kingdom's within you. So when they say he's in the desert or he's over there, don't go. You know why? Because you won't have to. Because <laughs> uh, it's have in to. you. And we got people chasing everything, mm-hmm. chasing the secret mystery of this, that, chasing revivals, chasing this anointing and that anointing, chasing this truth, what that truth, whatever, this camp, that camp. All these things are... Uh, <laughs> But they're doing it because they don't feel, they're not experiencing the love. And so how can you tell them? How, how can you open their brain and pour it in uh, like you, you, you said? <laughs> you wish you could, yeah, but you can't. That's, but that's you another just, thing. You just preach it and then... That's, that's, that's what we can do. We can tell the good news. Mm-hmm. Um, the rest of it happens, even people that are listening to us now, the rest of it happens between them and the Spirit of God. Mm-hmm. And, 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 you know, Jesus would say, he that has ears to hear, let him hear. Yeah. You know, and, and everybody's in different places. And don't you think people hear different things from different people? Like maybe they don't resonate with what we say, yeah. but they might resonate with another right. minister. There's a lot of wonderful but ministers that I like, but a lot the of them I just don't pay much attention to for whatever reason I resonate with certain ones yeah yeah so you let the Holy Spirit yeah kind of lead that yeah of course and, and, and another thing is that we're not following any man and we're not adhering to a man's doctrine um, it's 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 God and and really a good a good um, minister of the Lord should be espousing us to Christ should be should be uh, a, a, attaching us to him and his love not attaching us to themselves mm-hmm um, and, uh, oh, that's, good. Uh, and yeah. that's, that, that's what we want. You know, Paul said that I have espoused you to Christ. Right. He didn't espouse them to Paul. Yeah. <laughs> he didn't get them addicted to Paul. He said, here's what I did. I took your hand and I put it in the hand of Jesus. Now you and him got this thing going. Yeah. yeah now you and him talk about it. <laughs> Julia said his yoke is easy and his burden very, is very, 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 very true. This is what we're talking about. Tina said, when my husband died so long ago, one of the first things I did was to thank God for ending the suffering, his suffering mm-hmm. and pain. You do that. And another thing too, um, when, when Teresa, my first wife died, uh, he, see, he's, he's, he cares for us and he, 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 he counseled me, but he, he guided me into being thankful for all the good things that I had in it's all true, those years. But, yeah. Um, uh, instead of, uh, he said, people grieve uh, longer than is necessary because they're looking at what they lost instead of what they had uh-huh. and what they have. And uh, uh, of course, the Bible teaches uh, quite a few things about that, about about to him that has, uh, receives more. And uh, uh, so he, he directed me to that. And so there again, that's a way that God keeps you full. That that even though you lose this big part of your life, mm-hmm. you ha- you are still whole mm-hmm. because God. And there He was, mm-hmm. still keeping me full and and counseling me and being with me and caring for me and loving me because nothing separates us from that love of God. High death, death, life, nothing. Mm-hmm. God is love. God's good. He's been nothing but gentle with me, nothing but patient, nothing but mm. kind and good, going above and beyond. He's just, he makes no demands of me. Mm-hmm. That, that help, Rick can handle that. I can handle you know, a relationship with God where I don't have to live up to the demands of a being that is perfect. Yeah. You know, how, no wonder we fail so, so miserably at that. Yeah. So Glenn said, so the kingdom is established in us. I guess that was from the Yeah, and, and, and I love that Paul defined it in Romans. He said it's righteousness, it's peace, it's joy in the Holy Ghost. The kingdom came to us in the Spirit, mm-hmm. in Him. When He came to live in us, that's when the kingdom itself, kingdom of heaven itself, was, was, uh, took residence in us. And we carry it with, with us all the time. And we become to know these things. Here again, I never knew that truth uh, uh, as, as, as great as I did 
after I sensed the fullness of God's work, God's love, uh, and the fullness of it indicated to me that it was without any demands on me. It didn't need any of my help. It didn't require any of my help. In fact, it needed me to quit my help and get out of the way mm -hmm. and just receive and enjoy. That's the kind of father we have. Aww. That's just how he is. Alyssa said on a side note that she thinks she has the same water bottle as you. Hey, isn't this awesome? This is, this is or is it this one? I think I think she only saw Isn't mine your... prettier? No, I think mine's mine like is a prettier. nice manly. Mine is prettier. Okay. Uh, Oakland Raiders. I have kind a of question thing. for what? you. I have a question. What? It's something that I notice in you. So you're talking about this love that of of God, this charity that has no expectations, no demands put on it. Well, I see you be like that with other people where you don't have a demand on them that they treat you a certain way or or be a certain, you know, kind of person, a political party. You like don't have a a requirement on people. Is that this is from what's that? so cool. <laughs> it absolutely is. Uh, because when you've received that a love that makes no demands on you, then then you can now you you have you received it. So it's in mm -hmm. you. It's in your heart. You 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 under, you feel it. You're experiencing it, and you have that experience to now give to someone else. And you don't may have to make demands of other people. And that's really I'm so glad you brought that up because what's natural for mm -hmm. Unrenewed man, <laughs> the, 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 the carnal uh, mind, if you will, uh, the carnal. Uh, that they, we have standards. We have standards of how other people should be acting. Right. And right. and that's why we make demand. We say they should be doing that, and they're wrong for doing that. And you shouldn't talk to me like that. And you shouldn't treat me that way. And you shouldn't have done that. And we we make the judgments and we make the demands. Because we're operating in a way that's totally, and, and, and everybody's done it, <laughs> operating in a way that's totally separate from how God is with us. And so uh, when we're that way, you know, that's what we, we, we want a, a more of a revelation of, Lord, show me your love, you know. And, and, and really, you know, let me, let me back up on that. We don't even have, let, let's, let, let's quit trying to get God to show us his love. Because he's doing it all the time if we're just... Shh. We just mm -hmm. stop and look and listen. And that's what I did in that experience I talked about in fullness. I just laid on my back and I finally stopped. <laughs> mm -hmm. And when I stopped, I could look and listen and I saw his fullness, his glory, his goodness mm -hmm. for me. And that began to change everything. But yeah, when we've received a love that doesn't demand anything of us, mm -hmm. That's the love that we give. You know, Wonder. Jesus told about that steward that he was forgiven all of his debt. Mm -hmm. But then he goes and, and demands that other people pay theirs, you know. Because yeah. it's right, right? It's, yeah. it's right that they pay their debts. Right. But he didn't have to. The master made no demands of him. And, uh, you know, he said, you know, and Jesus, you know, so many, so many of these things, he's talking to religious leaders and religious people there. And he's like, you know, here's the point. God has forgiven all debt. Why do you want to make requirements and demands of all these people that this this woman caught in adultery she should have acted this way and this and this this thief should act this way and shouldn't do this and shouldn't do that you've been forgiven everything mm -hmm. God has made no demands of you mm -hmm. and I really think the reason that the steward was collecting debts even though his was forgiven was because he didn't really believe he was forgiven he still was trying he was still trying to pay that debts while he was collecting and and so that that's that's that mindset. And so yeah, I lo I'm so glad you brought that out because this is how we love a world that so often seems to be undeserving mm -hmm. in our judgment, in mm -hmm. according to our um, our demands and our um, our standards. Mm -hmm. And the God kind of love takes away. <laughs> takes away the standards necessary. Mm -hmm. And here's what, what, what's so cool, like we've mentioned before, 
because people are all concerned about, but what about the behavior? He ta- it's funny. He takes away all the standards of behavior and makes it a non-issue, but then our behavior changes. Like you said, then we start giving a love with mm-hmm. no demands. Yeah. There's nothing more godly than that. Yeah. Nothing more holy. No higher standard of living than giving that kind of love with no mm-hmm. demands or requirements because mm-hmm. that is, in essence, divinity itself. Mm. I remember when I went to work for Walt Disney World. And um, at Walt Disney, they they um, you just go by your first name. You have a name tag and you go by your first name. So even your superiors, you were just calling by their first name. And there was something about it that made you feel in a family. You know, it made you feel like you were just respected for who you were. I don't, I don't know yeah, how to explain yeah, it. Yeah, I can but see that. What it did for me is, even after I left working at Disney, I always had that sense of wanting people just to to call yeah. me by my first name, to feel like I'm on their their wavelength. Not that I was. Well, they like can feel at ease them. with you. Yeah, yeah. I, it really affected me. Another thing I thought of is I had a girlfriend who was very wealthy, and she would go on trips, and she'd let me drive her car, like a really nice car. She, 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 she has a really nice car right now. But anyway, she would like say, drive me to the airport and then drive the car home. And I would be like, oh, like, oh my gosh, I'm getting to drive this beautiful car. Mm-hmm. And then in my heart, I was like, I can't wait to let someone drive my car. Like, yeah. like in, and she would let me stay at her house. And then I wanted to let people stay at my house. Like That's those good. kind of like gracious acts. Yeah. They really did affect me. They do. And they, they what, what, what do they do? They make you want to, in turn, do that to someone else. Give someone else that same thing. You want, yeah. you, the funny thing is, we are the receivers of this thing. And, of course, you know, the behavior changes. You remember Jesus said, if you do this to the, these, to the least of these, you've done it to me. That shows the heart of God. He's like, you know, he's like, I'm not demanding that you even give back to me, mm-hmm. but what's just as good as that would be if you would do it to somebody else. Mm-hmm. Give what I've given you mm-hmm. to somebody. That's why he says, "Freely you've received, freely give." The key word is freely. Yeah, One, not not coercion, and and not, and not with payment. Mm-hmm. And so a lot of a lot of uh, our Christianity. Is that we feel like we've 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 done things on merit or transaction or payment mm-hmm. to where we to sh- where we receive we blessing, goodness, and favor because of what we've done, mm-hmm. and and so we haven't freely received, and that's one reason I, I will tell you something that mm-hmm. this world has not freely received of what we've what we've got because we haven't been freely receiving from God. Mm-hmm. This thing we freely receive is a love with no with no demands. Mm-hmm. And this is how this is how a world has changed. It's so clear to me. God is love. The main yeah. thing is to keep the main thing the, the main, main thing. thing. <laughs> like Julia said a while back, she goes, "The Holy Spirit keeps telling her to stop trying to do His job. <laughs> that like, is, just to like it's profound. Stop and let let me be the Holy Spirit. It's, not pr- it's it's profound because that's what has it gets in the way. And what's What's his job? His, his his job is number one. It's it's to love us, but his job is, is to is is the power to to change us, and not only, his job is to reveal the truth to us. So we try to make ourselves get the truth. You know, try to make ourselves understand things. We try to we tr- we try to change our behavior. You know, mm-hmm. for God, for God. You know, mm-hmm. and uh, uh, people that don't understand this. Um, they promote that kind of thing is that we, you know, we, we, we want to change our behavior for God. We want to live for God. We want to do, want to do what's pleasing in his sight as mm-hmm. if our behavior and performance is what's pleasing to him. Right. It's not. The Bible is clear. Faith is what's pleasing to him. Mm-hmm. Why? Because faith says, Lord, I receive it. Thank you. It's all yeah. on you. You're good. You're the giver. I'm the receiver. Faith receives. Faith doesn't give. Faith receives. Yeah. And that's why faith pleases him. You want to do what's pleasing in his sight, be loved. Just take this love without any payments. Yeah. Alyssa said, that's love, not control, not condemnation. Perfection is not the absence of Mm. flaws, 
but love in the midst of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in what is perceived by humans uh, as 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 flaws, and uh, uh, and and it's not control. Yeah, that's another thing too. Is is it's not control. So, you know, God's not God's not making us obey Him, love Him, serve Him, praise Him. Love seeks not her own. Here's a good revelation. God, God doesn't care. God's not demanding that we give him praise. He's not demanding that we give him money. He's not demanding that we, we give him obedience. He is not. Mm -hmm. Now, <laughs> we are people that, you know, we're living a life doing what God would have us to do. <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, we couldn't imagine doing anything else. Why? Well, because he's wonderful, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, and this life that in, in him is, is wonderful. How do we not tell somebody? How do we not? Another thing is, how do we not do what he leads? Because whatever he leads us in is so cool and so good. And it's so, mm -hmm. you know, it, it, we, we know it's just, it's, it's, obvious, it's the best thing. That's why we say, even before we know, we say, Lord, what do you want? You know, what, what do you want us to do? Because we know whatever he wants, that's going to be the best thing for us. Mm -hmm. So it's not like, oh, let's do what God wants. Oh boy. No, we're excited when we, when we feel like we're, like we know what God wants us to do. Yeah. Glenn said, I needed to hear about the debts. Yeah, because there again, that's, that, that's demands. Imagine a world, imagine your world where you're making <laughs> no demands of anyone. You know what that is? That's a happy person. When you don't need something from somebody else, you don't need somebody to do a certain thing, act a certain way. Um, live up to a certain thing. That's that. Well, God, God's love is perfect. Uh, a lot of times people, um, they try to project man's love on God. They say, well, love will do this and love will do that. No, man's love will do this and that. Yeah. God's love. You can't, you can't put it in a box like that. God's love is totally without, uh, with, without conditions, without caveats, without payments, with uh, it's it's unconditional. It's truly, truly, truly without conditions or demands. So Alyssa said, in relationships, though, we will sometimes have hard emotions that can come up. Love in that would be to let the other share those emotions and love in the midst of that instead of feeling condemnation from yourself and the other that you shouldn't feel that way, if that makes sense. Well, yeah, it, may, it makes sense because there should be no condemnation no matter what. And we're all doing the best we can, you know, probably. Um, we mess up, your emotions flare up. We, you know, there's, no, there, there's never any condemnation with it. Uh, what I do in situations, if I get over into acting flesh, I don't like it. I think to me it stinks and it's ugly. Yeah. Uh, you know, can't believe I acted like that. And, 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 and I'm truly sorry about it. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I, I make a note and say, well, I don't want to do that again. <laughs> yeah. Know? And, but, but con condemned, absolutely no way. And what we do, you mentioned like, like in, in relationships, when emotions flare up, this is what, this, what we're talking about tonight is what makes it easy to listen to the other person. Because there again, when people are making demands, mm -hmm. they, they don't, they don't listen. They just tell. Right. And, and this other love, this love that we're talking about that has fulfilled our heart, we don't have to have so, so we can give. And, and that heart to give makes us listen and say, what is it that you need? What is it that you want? What is it you're trying to say? And it, see how that love, it's a perfect love. And it, it really causes us to grow in that kind of, um, in that kind of perfect love. And so that we relate to a world around us, particularly those who are closest to us. But there's a, imagine a world where here we are in this kingdom and we're fighting for certain rights and we're fighting for certain positions in this world and certain demands actually. The truth is that we are not of this world, that we are of a kingdom and we're ambassadors to the world of that kingdom. And what we have to offer, what we have to give is a love with no demands. And when we are 
representing, say we're representing Christ and, or, or, or the kingdom of God and we come making demands, we're not reflecting the one that we're sent from. We're not reflecting the father that we were born from. So here we are, we're a world that what we can give is a perfect and absolute love, which I promise you is the thing that permeates hearts. It melts hearts. It has not been tasted by nearly enough hearts. Even Christian hearts, by and large, honestly, have not tasted a whole lot of a love without any kind of demands. This is why I preach it all the time. I preach to the church. I'm preaching to, you know, to, to, to the choir here. But here we are, kingdom. The, the believers, the believers need to get this first because we've got the goods here. We've been given this love. We've been given a relationship with someone who is, who is love. But over the centuries, we've made it about other things. We've made it about so many other fleshly, carnal ideas. Mm-hmm. And what we have to offer this world is not controlling them and forcing them to be like we want them to be or, or to pass laws that we want them to pass. Mm-hmm. We are of a different kingdom and what we have to offer is something that the world doesn't have on its own. Only God does this. Mm-hmm. And God doesn't come and fight with this world. We're not fighting with this world. We're giving to this world. Mm-hmm. We're not fighting with and you people really can't we love. We're giving to them. If you don't have... It to receive, give. Freely yeah, receive, you have to freely receive. give. And so that's why that's why it all starts with this. This is the most important thing. As far as I'm concerned, there is nothing else. Yeah. There is nothing else. It's God who is love. Al- Alyssa's saying, I saw a video, and I know what video she's talking about. I think I might have shown it to you. Anyway, she reposted it on Facebook. It's of a child having a complete meltdown, and the dad is just sitting there. Do you, did I show it I, to I, you? I saw that, yeah. And the kid is just, I mean, going on and on. And the dad is just sitting there sort of, let me see what she says. He just sat next to the kid and let the child have all of his emotions. And finally, the child was ready, just like the father God. This father was there with open arms. The child just melted into his arms. It was very emotional. And it spoke to me a lot about the power of love. Because the dad was just sitting, he was just making sure he didn't hurt himself. And he was just letting him, you know, have his... Emotions and the child was very frustrated That's, or upset about something. What, we're, what we see in that is the fruit of the spirit, patience, right? Yeah. And that only comes because that's what the father is. That's what he has. Yeah. He, he's the ultimate of patience. He's, yeah. And that's what he has with us. And he sees us going off the wall and doing all this stuff. I mean, I, I have had fits. I have chewed out God before. I have blamed God for things. I've gotten mad at God in my past. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's 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 immaturity. We grow, mm-hmm. but um, um, I know it never moved him. Mm-hmm. It didn't upset him. He stayed steadfast, persistent, and he stayed. Mm-hmm. And he it didn't. It, his arms were right there the whole time to love me and wrap me up. And he loved me through all of that. And that's why I don't throw so many fits anymore. <laughs> <laughs> His love fixes that too. John and Kimberly Dukes. Good word, Rick and Judy. Not fighting with this world, but giving right? from a place of love. And I was just thinking about a little incident I had <laughs> this weekend. So we were going to church on Sunday and Rick wanted to stop and get a nice tea at McDonald's. <laughs> and I didn't want to be late for church again so i (laughs) i was trying not to say anything i really was i was trying to be good and then we get to mcdonald's we're already like 10 minutes late but we get to mcdonald's and there's a real long line so i like sigh like oh do we have to be late and rick's like no no we don't and he just got out of line and went back on the freeway but i i think like in the scheme of things the fact that we're late to church is not the horrible end yeah, of the world. Yeah. In those moments, it feels like. But it. in that moment, <laughs> you think like, oh, I'm going to pull my hair out. But, but in the grand scheme of things, if something happened to you, I would, I would hate that I, that was the yeah, we get, thing we get emotional. I 
let on We get you. emotional over things that later on we realize, um, looking back sometime, we realize um, we're not worthy of, 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 of that. But here's a good thing. I like what Alyssa said, is that we grow. There, there, honestly, there's no condemnation in this. And that there yeah. again, uh, you talk, you, you mentioned about uh, me not having, um, what was the word you used? Like um, requirements and the pressure, or the yeah, you don't have a lot of expectations on people, right? And 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 even upon myself, upon yourself, um, yeah. I'm I'm just digging being loved. I know you just come home, you're singing all these happy <laughs> songs. You're you're always happy. Uh, that's the fruit like, of the spirit. You're always happy, <laughs> and that <laughs> see that's the change. If people think well, if people are like, but but what about people changing? Don't we have to put pressure on them to change? Only when the pressure came off did the change start happening. Amen. And Julia said something. Like, well, what we resist persists. Yeah. You ever notice that? That's yeah. so true, right? Yeah. So, I mean, some things. Maybe some of you watching. You've been resisting things for for twenty years or more. Yeah. There it is. Uh huh. Um, it's I, God has taken care of everything. Just please enjoy Him, rest in Him. Um, it's finished. Mm. Welcome home. You've come to Mount Zion, it's the heavenly news. Jerusalem. Look around at heavenly Jerusalem. Look around at, 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 at where you dwell in the spirit. You're home and you're in rest mm -hmm. and you're finished. Now enjoy from now through eternity. Mm -hmm. Enjoy. And, and what happens is that truly the things of this world grow strangely dim. They become, they become like as small as they really are. If you look at things like like Judy said in the grand scheme of things, look at the big, the real picture. The temporary, the dumb little temporary things of this world come and go, and they are so virtually nothing compared to the bigness of God, His kingdom, His love, His His power mm -hmm. in us. You know how you know that's true is in one minute you can be looking at the same situation and it looks like you can't handle it, like you, you can't stand it. Mm -hmm. And then like two minutes later you can look at the same exact situation and see it as mm -hmm. totally good, you yeah. know, and it's just a matter of your Yeah, your I, I experience that quite a, quite, quite a bit. It's just, it's just seeing, seeing, seeing through seeing. the right... Right eyes. The eyes of the spirit. The eyes of truth. Because mm -hmm. what you see in the spirit is truth. And what you see in the flesh is not mm -hmm. always the and truth. And what, <laughs> what you see in the flesh usually brings the opposite <laughs> right. of the things of the spirit. It brings that brings stress or anger or, or something. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but the truth. T-R-U-T-H. That's spell it right? <laughs> yes. it, 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 it results in... Goodness. Joy, love, yeah. goodness, uh, the, the things of God. It's just because his word is truth. Susan Alexander hey, said, hey, Susan. Rick and Judy, I have missed you guys. We've missed yeah, you. Yeah, we've Good certainly you. missed you. Good to see you here on eChurch as we wrap it up. I we guess are wrap wrapping it up. it up now. Okay. But this was a good message. I really, really appreciate um, This was fun. Appreciate that, it. It's, just, it's the um, most wonderful, fun thing to talk about and to think on you know a love that has no demands on you that's it's charity. why am i demanding of me if he's not demanding of yes me? so true and then if, and then why am i demanding of anybody else why yeah oh you have a nice time you enjoy with people, people of this world. you can enjoy <laughs> you can't enjoy them when you make demands you can't yeah. do it <laughs> But yeah, hey, you can enjoy Fran. them and love them. Huh? I've just seen Fran's little face up there. Oh, yeah, Fran joined us. Hi, Fran. Uh, I saw when she jumped in. She jumped in. Mm -hmm. All right, we better get going. Um, All we're right. going to be on we're the road go, next week. And so... Yeah, we're, we're leaving Saturday. Something and we'll be with our beautiful, wonderful people in Cunningham, Texas. Fran, we're going to see and Fran. And we'll be in... Uh, Benito, Benito, Oklahoma, Oklahoma. Ketchum, Oklahoma, Odessa, Texas, Chillicothe, Texas, Sherman, Texas. Okay. And so we'll be all over there. Um, come see us if you're anywhere near there. Or, or even if you're not, fly into Dallas and drive to one of those places. Yeah, right? <laughs> come see us. <laughs> all right. Hey, Kim and Michael, we love you guys. Love you guys. Love you, friends. See you in bye -bye, Gwen. two weeks or maybe three weeks. Probably three weeks. Yeah. Love this message. We love you, Michelle. We love you, Michelle. 
All right. Good night, guys. Good night, Quinn.